bring in, um, fortunately, we've been joined by Dominic Aina, who is a, a former Deputy Attorney General and currently a Member of Parliament. He was in the House, heard what the Speaker has said, actually has joined us because his name was mentioned by Alexander Penyomark in the leader of the NPP side in Parliament, that he, Dominic Aine, actually also posited or over the weekend indicated that he supports the fact that the Speaker of the House should abide by the Supreme Court's order. Mr. Ayana, thank you for joining us uh, on TV3. First of all, uh, what do you make of the fact, let's talk about the Speaker's decision and the fact that you've been roped into all of this, that you have even said that the Speaker should abide by the court's ruling. Well, I, I think that, that that was a very a very mischievous uh, use of the opinion that I expressed, you know, on your program on Friday. Uh, I'm sure your viewers would know that on Friday, uh, I mean, around, I think, uh, 3.30 to 4, thereabout, I was interviewed by one of your 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 anchors. Yes. Uh, I think that was Kemini. Yes. And she asked me a direct question about whether the order, you know, should be obeyed. I explained and I stated the correct position of the law, which is that it does not matter if um, the order of a court, you know, of competent jurisdiction is, you know, I mean, a wrong. You have to first obey. And then I advise that Mr. Speaker's lawyers, if, if, we, if Mr. Speaker disagrees with the order, his lawyers should then proceed, you know, to, I mean, apply to vacate the order. Now, subsequent developments have, you know, I mean, uh, overtaken that opinion. And I stand with the caucus on his view that, I mean, a parliament has to stand up to the court. All right. The, the, the majority caucus issued a press release uh, you know, on Sunday, in which they made it, ab I mean, we made it abundantly clear, okay, that we are, we, we as parliament will stand up to the Supreme Court and that will not be intimidated by what the court is doing by issuing those type of orders which have no legal basis. You disagree with the, the thoughts that were shared by uh, Afenio Markin that you, uh, by extension, was advising the speaker to abide by the Supreme Court's ruling. Clearly, well, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not the. I'm not the speaker's lawyer in mm. any in any way. I don't. I wasn't speaking in any capacity as the speaker's lawyer. I express an opinion mm. regarding what the legal position is in in terms of compliance with orders of the court. Okay, right. and I said that. The, I mean, Mr. Speaker is an experienced lawyer himself, and he knows this position. Okay, that was a legal opinion that was expressed. It was not the political position, you know, that was taken with respect to, you know, what we do in Parliament. So, you know, mixing the two is just, I mean, a, a mischievous way of trying to muddy, muddy the water. Mm. Yeah, and to make it look like I am isolating myself and standing apart from my caucus. I am standing with my caucus on the political decision that we have taken. Very well. Doc, I have a feeling your caucus would have no doubt when it comes to that. But I do want to ask you, is this how you envisaged the day ending? Well, yeah, this is, this is, this is I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure your people were there like, and Mr. Speaker made it very clear that we did not have a quorum to conduct, I mean, uh, to, we had a quorum to conduct business, but we had no quorum to take decisions. You know, and, and, that, and, that is, and that is why he was adjourning the House senior day. Well, I actually that understand that. What I'm asking is, did you think the day was going to end like this without, you know... No, the, no, I, I, didn't, I didn't think so. Mm. I didn't think so. I thought that there would have been a negotiated settlement, you know, uh, that the entrenched position taken by the NPP on this matter, all right, uh, they would have come off it for us to have a negotiated settlement. Look, I mean, we can, we can do this whole thing about majority and minority, okay, um, matters only when it comes to decisions, okay? And when you place business on the table, okay, there is a, a process of give and take. So, for instance, given the fact that we now have 136 members and they have 135, there are certain businesses that we oppose, all right? Now, you can take those businesses off the table and then do the businesses that you know will push through because there is consensus on those. We don't need to have a zero-sum in a game approach to the conduct of our politics. The problem is the NPP always wants to have its way to, I mean, or, or, or there should be no way. I'll give you an example. When I was Deputy Attorney General, 
We took the right to information bill to Parliament. I was under strict instructions from my, my boss, the Honorable, I mean, Marekwa Blue, you know, to ensure that the, the bill was navigated to, I mean, uh, to, uh, through Parliament and passed. Okay. At some point in time, there was still opposition from the NPP. We had a clear majority. We could have, we could have told them that they, they should go to hell and gone ahead to pass the bill in the form in which, I mean, uh, we, 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 I mean, uh, 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 took it to Parliament. But the then majority leader, incidentally, the Honorable Alban Sumana Kings, Kings, uh, Kingsford Bagbin was the one who called me aside and he said, look, I mean, we are a democracy. The majority, I mean, the minority certainly have issues with this your bill, all right? And they are raising those issues strongly on the floor. Can we stand it down and deal with it after the elections? You okay? Now mm -hmm. they say, you know, I mean, uh, as they always say, the rest is history. We lost the elections, and they came and took that bill and watered it down significantly and brought it to Parliament. Guess what? We helped them to pass the bill. Why are they always taking very they entrenched were, positions so on that? Obviously, issue? what today, perhaps the message the NPP was also trying to send out to your cookers in Parliament is that you really can't do anything with the majority. They may have, has, have succeeded, don't you think? Well, I don't think so. I don't think so. What, what, did, they expect us, that would, what did they expect us to do you know, with, with our majority? We are the opposition. And we, were, we, are, we are there, okay, to hold their feet to the fire. They are refusing to bring the business so that we hold them to the fire. And then they say that we, we have not succeeded. In any case, once we have all our members, you know, the 136 in the House, we will have the, I mean, the, the, the opportunity, you know, to, I mean, take decisions. And we'll take the decisions and let them, I mean, uh, but how, how, uh, do you take, how do you take the decision? Uh, if, if we are going with 275 MPs, which is what? No, 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 no. We, no, no, uh, hang on. No, no, let me make have, the point. We don't have, we don't, now we don't have 275 I absolutely understand. But if that is the case. We have, we, we if, have, no, that is not the case. We have 271 members. I and, see. And half, and half of 271 members, all right. Uh, we have the two and the, we have the one thirty six to be able to conduct. I mean, uh, conduct business and take decisions. I see. But so what I'm saying is, if that be the case, then the speaker wouldn't have concluded today that you didn't have the majority to take a decision. But, no, but that is because that is because from the votes and proceedings, from the sign sheets of attendance, the speaker has been informed of the fact that we don't have one thirty six members in the house. I see. So it would appear that yes. some people from your side were, were missing. That is why no, yeah, that the majority yeah, they, was... They, they, were, they are on parliamentary travel. That is, I mean, they, some of them have traveled abroad for business. I mean, for instance, the spring meeting has taken most of the uh, members of the finance committee to Washington, D.C. Oh. I mean, I have to be honest with you. So I see. It's not as if our members stayed away deliberately or so, but some of them have gone... You know, I mean, uh, to the spring meeting in Washington Very well. with so, the members of the NPP. Doc, where where do we go from here? Uh, the impression is that it would appear that the country is being held to ransom now that the, you know Parliament has been adjourned indefinitely. What's next, really? Well, we I don't think that we. I mean, anyone is holding the country to ransom. Um, parliament has been adjourned. If Parliament has to be recalled, you know, we need. You know about the, I mean the, the uh, about 93 or 94 members of parliament to sign a petition for a recall to take place. Mm -hmm. Mr. Speaker can, you know, I mean in his own discretion also recall parliament. All right. So I, I think that uh, for now, because there's an impasse with respect to uh, this issue, that is why people think that I mean that we are, I mean the country is being held to ransom. Uh, I'm sure we'll resume normal parliamentary business before the year ends, and then certainly after the elections, Parliament will continue to function you know, normally in terms of the Constitution. I see. Very uh, well, Doc. No, no, just before you go, and Thank probably you. my last question to you would be that, um, so the Speaker has, uh, we are told that the lawyers of the Speaker are heading to the courts to uh, set aside the court's decision. Um, yes. What are your immediate thoughts on that? And some have described it as a legal absurdity. You agree? What, what is a legal absurdity? That the speaker 
has asked his lawyers to go to the no, same but, Supreme Court and, and, and clearly no, that's no, going no. to be... It cannot, it cannot, you know, I don't know why people uh, want to eat their cake and have it, all right? The same people who are calling uh, for the speaker to abide by the ruling of the court are the ones who, I mean, are saying that it is an absurdity that he's going to the Supreme Court. What other forum do you think the speaker should go to vindicate, I mean, his, I mean himself on this issue, all right? Every lawyer worth his salt, you know, has said that the Supreme Court was wrong. Even lawyers from the stock of the MPP have said the Supreme Court was wrong. Mm. And it is very, very clear. Because as I said on your, on your, your, your station, and then uh, on Saturday on Joy, Joy News, okay, on a news file, right, the speaker's so-called ruling is not... I mean, uh, uh, even a quasi-judicial order or a judgment of a court of competent jurisdiction to be set aside. So it's very shameful that the Supreme Court would have sat, I mean, uh, on an application, you know, mm -hmm. to stay execution of, you know, I'm, I'm, I mean, it's something like that. Okay. Dr. Dominic, I a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for your thoughts and perspectives as always.